Churchill Downs announced new safety initiatives today after the track has seen 12 horses die in the span of a month and they go into effect immediately. WDRB's Eric Crawford joining us now to discuss these changes. Eric, first set the stage, kind of walk us through the changes quickly and your impression uh, on what will be changing immediately now? A, a lot of financial incentives. You no longer get paid no matter where you finish. Uh, trainers, only the top five finishers in a race will be paid. Uh, there's, they've done away with some trainers' bonuses in terms of number of starts. There's also a situation where they're restricting the number of starts, no more than four starts in an eight-week rolling period. And then there's a performance incentive. If you've lost four straight races by 12 or more lengths, you're ineligible to run at Churchill Downs. And we wonder like, okay, so who is making these changes? How much of a role does Heise's involvement play in these decisions? And do you think more changes might be coming to Churchill Downs? Well, I, I think more changes are coming. This was a Churchill Downs set of changes. This didn't have anything to do with Heise. They did not meet with them before making these. Heise has been talking for the last couple of days in their emergency summit meetings in Lexington. We expect within the hour, they will come out and say something, whether they make new res recommendations, we're not sure. So the changes that Churchill Churchill Downs came forward with today. Can we directly tie them back to some of the 12 horse deaths over the last month? I think particularly the last two we can, where they were seven-year-old horses, who, one who had run 30 or more races, one had run more than 60 races, neither had been very competitive in the races leading up to the race where they died. I think some of these rules are directly set up to address what happened with those and the conditions that led to those deaths, yes. Okay, so Louisville native and prominent trainer Brad Cox, along with Hall of Fame jockey John Velasquez, responded to these changes on a teleconference call uh, previewing the Belmont Stakes. Cox was actually in the Churchill meeting with the horsemen today. Let's listen in. I did a lot of listening. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. I think Churchill's trying to turn over every card and not every T and cross every I, and just a lot of stuff happening over the last uh, few weeks or since the meeting began, and, and hopefully, you know, we, we, we're kind of coming to the end of this. It's tough to comment about. I tell people, you know, I have enough on my plate in regards to the horses I'm training, and I'm very happy with our staff and what, what our what the program we have in place. Protect the horses, obviously. They took the, the, the initiative or, or the incentive to run horses, so even if they run last, right? So that means that somebody's put on the horse and the race that probably not fit enough to, you know, to be in the race for whatever it may be. That alone will change people's mentality, but, you know, not just to put a, put a horse in the race just because they're going to get an incentive or some sort of money even for the horse finish last. So that, that should help a lot. Giving horses time to recuperate in the best shape to run races, that's the way it should be. And likely a lot more to be coming out on this. Eric, we know you will be following along and you at home can follow along uh, with this and Eric's articles on WDRB.com.